Hi, and welcome to Dr. Vanderveen's AP Chemistry Podcast. We are here today to talk about the relationship between Gibbs free energy, delta G, and redox reactions. Now, there's a simple equation that allows us to do this. We know that delta G is equal to negative NFE, where F is the Faraday's constant, 96,500 coulombs per mole of electron, or from the definition of coulomb, 96,500 joules per volt per mole of electron. M, the number of electrons transferred in the reaction. It's best if you go and look at the half reactions involved. How many electrons are lost? How many electrons are gained? When they are equal, that's N. And of course, E is E cell. Now we're focusing on standard conditions, E naught values, all right, for E cell. We're at standard conditions, which is 25 degrees Celsius, one molar solution. All right. We know if we have a positive E cell value, whether you're at standard conditions or not, if we just look at our equation, delta G equals negative NFE, that if E is positive, delta G has to be negative. And of course, we learned in our thermodynamics unit that a negative delta G is a spontaneous process. Well, the converse will be true as well. Since delta G equals negative NFE, if E naught is negative, it means delta G has to be positive. And we learned that that's a non-spontaneous process. The forward reaction will not occur spontaneously. When we're talking about positive E naught, we're usually talking about a voltaic cell. And if we've got a negative E naught, we're talking about an electrolytic cell. We'll talk about different cell types in separate podcasts, so you can go check those out if you need to review that one. Now we can also relate the E cell to the equilibrium constant. We learned that delta G equals minus RT ln of K, and we know that K equals E to the negative delta G over RT, and we could certainly go right from here, because if we calculated delta G directly from E, we could go ahead and do that. We can also, uh, if we go to common laws, have another expression at 25 degrees Celsius. We can say that the log of K is equal to N, the number of electrons transferred, times E cell divided by 0.0592. So we have a couple of ways we can do it. We are going to do whatever is easiest for you because you should get the same answer regardless of what route you take. So let's do a typical problem. We're going to construct a voltaic cell. And of course, that's a clue that E cell should be positive. From the half reaction involving copper plus, copper one and copper two ions, and the aluminum and aluminum ions, the half cells. You have to be careful with the copper half cells when you look at your standard reduction potential sheet, because there is more than one uh, half reaction involving copper. We want the one involving copper two ions and copper one ions. So when you go and look that up, and you have to have your standard reduction potentials to do this problem. If you don't have your handout, go look it up in the back of your chemistry textbook. We find the following half reactions. We find copper 2 plus plus 1 electron gives me the copper 1 ion, and that has a standard reduction potential of plus 0.15 volts. And we find the aluminum half reaction, aluminum ion, gaining three electrons to form solid aluminum, that has a standard reduction potential of minus 1.66 volts. Well, of course, this is a voltaic cell. We know that means we should have a positive E cell. And we know that standard reduction potentials tell us which one is going to reduce more, more readily. Well, that would be the copper half reaction. It's got a higher E naught. And so it's going to stay as reduction. This is what will occur at the cathode. And the aluminum half reaction with its negative E naught has a greater tendency to oxidize. So we're going to let that be the oxidation half reaction, which will happen at the anode. All right. But this, of course, is currently a reduction half reaction. So we needed to flip this reaction and make it, write it as an oxidation, and we're going to have to change the sign of E naught. We are going to use this to find the balanced equation and calculate E cell. And once we have E cell, calculating delta G and the KEP is quite simple. 
All right, I like to line up my arrows when I do this. Um, so I'm going to keep the reduction half reaction for the copper 2 plus. Just write that as we had it before. The E naught was plus 0.15. The aluminum half reaction, we decided it was more likely to oxidize, so I'm going to write it as an oxidation half reaction. And I'm going to change the sign of E naught, so now it's positive. Okay. Now the other thing I notice is that I am gaining one electron but losing three. Well, we have to have conservation of charge. So I need to multiply this top half reaction by three. But I don't multiply E naught by three because E naughts are intensive properties. So we won't change that. So let's go ahead and write the balanced equation. Should be three copper two ions plus aluminum gives me three copper one ions plus aluminum ions. And we get E cell is equal to 1.18 volts. I'm sorry, I misspoke, 1.81 volts. If I wrote it down properly on my worked out solution, then you said it wrong. All right, we need to do two things. We said we need to calculate delta G and KEG. And we know that delta G is equal to minus N F E. And this equation is on your formula sheet. Now, if you go back and look at the work that we did, we have lost three electrons and gained three electrons. That means N is equal to three. Okay, so let's plug this in. Delta G equals negative three times the Faraday's constant, 96,500 coulombs per mole, and one th which would be joules per volt, right, per mole the moles are going to cancel out. And we had 1.81 volts. So I do this out and I ended up with an answer of minus 524 kilojoules. Because I converted my answer to kilojoules. I should show that worked, but I didn't. All right, the other thing we were asked to do was to find the equilibrium constant K. Well, we could do it from the delta G value we just found, or we can find it from E cell, and that's how I'm going to choose to do it. So we know that the log of K is equal to the N times E naught over 0 0.0592. Just going to plug that in. All right, we knew that N was equal to 3. We knew that E naught was 1.81 divided by 0 0.0592. So I get a value for the log of K equaling 91.7. Well, I know that if I do the inverse of that, I'll get back to the numbers that I want. So 10 to the um, negative 90 to, to the 91.7. All right, that gives me k equaling 5.28 times 10 to the 91. I would say, yeah, that's consistent with a spontaneous process. A very, 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 very large value for the equilibrium constant. Obviously, this favors products. Uh, that's consistent with negative delta G that we had. That's consistent with the positive E cell that we had. This would function as a battery. Uh, so I think we're in excellent shape. We'll talk another time.